So jumping right into the tool, again, Magic Cyber System Engineer is a tool that we support here at Go Engineer, uh, and it's the tool of choice for a lot of companies that are implementing model-based systems engineering. Of course, it is SysML compliant, that being the uh, language of choice for implementing model-based systems engineer, and there are a lot of ways to expand your capabilities uh, with the tool. Uh, we have two of them over here on the right. One of them is the Magic Collaboration Studio. Uh, this allows uh, simultaneous collaboration on your um, projects with your modelers, as well as uh, serving as a repository for all of your version control and change control processes. Now, we won't be going over that in this webinar, but we'll, we, we will be going over Magic Model Analysts. Uh, Magic Model Analyst is the simulation toolkit. It allows you to execute your models and do some early um, verification and validation uh, before you get to your, your build process. And with that, we can jump right into uh, Magic Cyber Systems Engineer. Currently, I have Magic Cyber Systems Engineer 2024 open, and we are looking at the welcome page. Now, if you can't view the welcome page, all you need to do is close all of your projects, come over to help, and click uh, show welcome screen. And now with that, we'll go ahead and create a new project and jump into our uh, demonstration. So I'll create a new project and we will name this um, Build, Simulate, and Validate. We are using a simple SysML project. Depending on your version, um, you may have additional frameworks uh, already available to you, such as Magic Grid or any of the additional plugins. And we will also use the basic Unix library. This will allow us access to things such as uh, mass uh, kilograms, for example, for uh, typing some of our, our uh, properties. So now that we have that created, I'll actually go ahead and uh, just right click here, create a diagram and use a block definition diagram so that we have all of our uh, toolbars and palettes available to us so that we can go over the um, user interface. And that's, that's what we'll do now. So if you look at the top left, uh, first you will be greeted with the uh, main menu. Now the main menu is not customizable. Secondly, you have your main toolbar. Now the main toolbar is customizable as you can see here. Uh, you're able to rearrange or uh, add additional items to the main toolbar if you so choose based on your modeling preferences. Uh, you can also move these around depending on your preferences as well. Now, uh, as we move down to the left, we now have our model browser. So the model browser is where you can access the containment tree. Um, any diagrams, as you can see, this creates a package for any diagram that ha I have already created in the model, as well as your structure tab. Now the structure tab, we'll go over a little bit later to uh, really show how that can be useful to you as you uh, go through your modeling process. Um, now down on the right, you have your quick properties panel. And if you look, you can uh, adjust your zoom based on the diagram. Uh, add documentation to any diagram or element that you have selected, as well as view some, um, actually most of the properties available to you uh, that would normally be uh, accessible through the specification page. So as you can see, uh, we have our documentation as well as our tags. You won't have everything available to you, but it definitely comes in handy for uh, quick modeling. Now on the bottom, we have our status line. Uh, as you can see, uh, it tracks our movement on the diagram. Uh, you can also adjust your zoom here. Uh, go into presentation mode for any diagram that you currently, currently have selected. Uh, view your background task as well as uh, track your uh, memory usage uh, in the software. So finally, moving on to, over to the diagram, we have the diagram pane here that you will do most of your modeling on. Your diagram toolbar, that is also customizable depending on the diagram that you have open or uh, anything that is really unique to you in your modeling process. And then finally, we have the diagram palette. The diagram palette is where I'll be selecting all of our elements for creation as we go through our uh, simulation. 
And so now that we're all familiar with the user interface, we can jump right into uh, our demonstration for today. So I'll just come over here and delete this diagram. And now we can start working on creating our package structure for organizing our model. And I'm not gonna be using any um, specific architecture framework for um, this containment tree. I should be going down and creating based on how we're gonna walk through our demonstration for today. And so I'm just right clicking, going to create an element and creating our, our packages that we'll be using today. Another thing that I can do is uh, if there are no elements that have the same name, um, actually, actually come right into uh, the search bar here and create some of the packages. Just clicking enter and it'll create it with that name. I can also copy and paste this. Um, and I actually double clicked, but I can come and rename this package as well uh, based on what I need. You can do that with um, any model element. I can actually uh, hit control and copy both of these. And now it created a duplicate of both of those in our model. So our funnel packages are going to be six interfaces. And seven instances. So now that we have that um, package structure, we can go through and start creating our model. So we'll start off with the requirements. And there are a couple of different ways that you can create requirements, um, but I'm just going to start off with a simple requirements table. Now, I already have my requirements for our system here in this Excel table. Um, there are a couple of ways that I can move this into the model, but I'm just going to copy and paste for it today. So all I need to do is have um, the columns of our tables be identical. We have our requirement text, our requirement name, but I am missing requirement ID here at the top. So I'll just come over to columns, I'll select my ID, and I'll move that over here to uh, the left in order to replicate my Excel tables. So I'll come through, copy and paste, and it asks me what type of requirement I want to create. Uh, I'm just looking for simple requirements. And so now that'll create those based on the requirements I had in my Excel table. Uh, another way that I can view these is on a requirements diagram. So if I click and shift and drag all these over, I actually have all of my requirements. Um, so as you can see, I actually pulled in the um, top row that identified my requirement ID and text. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'll just delete the text from this one. Um, set the ID as SR-1. As you can see that changes in the table as well. And actually I can change in the table here. I want my name to be um, holder, for example. Now what I can do is I can come over to this uh, sticky button, grab my containment relationship, and as I move these under the requirements holder, you'll see them move over in the containment tree as well. And so this is how I'm going to organize uh, my model. And as they are moved under the containment of this requirement, the ID changes as well. Uh, so one thing you can do is um, actually control Z, and that works here, and as you see, um, when I control Y, the uh, ID changes for that requirement. Then I'll use my quick layout here in order to um, really make my diagram pretty. And so another thing that you can do is you can create a, a requirements map. Um, so I'll come over to expert mode for my requirements uh, and create my requirement containment map. And this will show me my containment for all the requirements that I currently have, uh, depending on the scope that I set for this map. And so with that, we are uh, finished with our requirements. Uh, we can go back and review them. We have four requirements. They are the system shall consist of two subsystems. The sh system shall operate on a maximum of 12 BDC. The system subsystems shall exchange data packages. And the system shall accept power from the host. 
Um, so one thing that we're going to go over in this um, webinar is to really understand the connectivity and the benefits of being in a model-based systems engineering environment. And so we're going to move through from uh, creating our requirements, creating our structure, tracing our uh, requirements to our structure, uh, creating our behavior, and then tying our behavior to our structure as well. And the final wraparound of that is tying our requirements to our behavior for us to automatically um, validate some of the requirements that are validatable in a uh, model-based environment.